I don't know Christine Holgate personally. I don't think I've ever met her. I might have, but I don't think I have. But I do know of her business reputation before her role at Australia Post when she ran Blackmore's, the vitamin company, and established a formidable reputation. Indeed, the man who founded the company, Marcus Blackmore, who I've met many times, is one of the smartest corporate players of his generation. I know he regarded her highly and was sorry to see her go when she went to Australia Post. Holgate has worked hard to earn her good name. She's a very able business leader, sort of turnaround expert that a business like Australia Post needs now more than ever as the Post business here and around the world comes under huge pressure from the online environment with email all but obliterating the physical letters business but also opportunities as online shopping dramatically increases the parcel delivery business. Australia Post faces other challenges too, not least of all, some in government long wanting to privatise it, to sell off all of it or parts of it. And it's got a heavy load of government imposed regulations that burden it as well. And even Australia's geography, all of those things impact Australia Post. But I'll get to that in just a moment. So while I don't know Christine Holgate, I know of her, and I certainly know about Australia Post inside and out, not just in a government policy sense as a former chief of staff to a communications minister, and that time it was Helen Coonan, an advisor to Coonan's predecessor as well, Richard also, Richard Alston, but also I grew up as a, a child of parents who owned a licensed post office, an Australia Post outlet, when I was still at school and later at university. So I've, I've been at the coalface for some time. Now, today's Senate hearings centred around the nature of Holgate's departure from Australia Post and the whole issue of those expensive watches that you'll recall she gave to senior st staff as a bonus for securing a $200 million banking contract for the licensed post office network. So that in addition to the postal service business, these LPOs could offer banking services, as they had for many years. Indeed, in many country towns and regional parts of Australia, there are no bank branches anymore. It's just the post office that offers banking services. Now, Holgate's been investigated over the watches and found that she acted inside the rules. The watches, worth around $3,000 each, were something she was allowed to gift to staff Indeed, in evidence today was made clear she could spend up to $150,000 without board sign-off. Do I think it was a smart idea to hand out Cartier watches? No, I don't. Another brand or just the cash might never have made the headlines. But was it outside the rules? No. And on that, Holgate is in the clear. But while I might all have started out as an issue about watches, it's now gone way beyond that with claims at a Holgate, by Holgate today, that she was forced out by a bullying chairman keen to do the Prime Minister's bidding after the Prime Minister's comments at the time in the Parliament. We are the shareholders of Australia Post, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Australian people. So that action was immediate. That action was immediate. And if the Chief Executive wishes to stand aside, well, not wishes to stand aside, she's been instructed to stand aside. And if she doesn't wish to do that, Mr Speaker, she can go. Now, to say today's evidence from Holgate was explosive is an understatement. I said last week it was going to be one you wouldn't want to miss, given she'd taken the extraordinary step of putting in a 151-page submission to the inquiry but also, as I watched the proceedings today, the very manner of her evidence was personal and compelling. I was seriously ill. I was on tamazepam. I was suicidal. She spoke of how she'd been treated differently to male public servants and indeed politicians accused of doing the wrong thing. Members of Parliament who are being accused of the most terrible atrocities to women, proven with one of them, and they're allowed to stand and still remain in their jobs and represent our country. I was forced to stand down. Now, I've seen a lot of witnesses give evidence at parliamentary committees, but she was forensic. And, and for most of her testimony, this is interesting, she gave dates, time, details, all without even needing to refer to a note. It was all top of mind. That was really impressive. And I thought to myself, actually, doesn't this make a nice change 
to what we saw in last year's coat inquiry. From the Victorian Premier down, all we got as taxpayer citizens was a whole lot of I don't knows and I can't remembers. And Holgate's Corner was not only the organisation of every privately owned licensed post office in Australia, so the LPOs, like my mum and dad owned, but also Australia's Post's own head of human resources, with both women backing in Holgate's testimony of her treatment, which she said today, Holgate, it was in breach of the company's HR practices, in her view, fair work employment standards, and her own legal employment contract. I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm disappointed with, with how, how, how she was treated from, from the point of, of, of the Senate, uh, you know, from, from that point on, I'm very disappointed um, to, for a lot of things that, that have happened um, of the, 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 the process. You know, I, I, I do believe that, you know, we've, uh, certainly I, we have done everything to try and support Christine through that. Yeah. I certainly do not recall a conversation where Christine agreed to stand down. Now, as angry as Holgate might have been about her treatment, she alleges from the PM and ministers that have the Australia Post business inside their portfolio control. It was the Australia Post chairman, Lucia Bartolomo, who she reserved her most pointed criticism. And again, backed up with dates, detail and plenty of facts. To, if somebody offers to resign to test that that resignation is real, there was no testing, so the, the chair never called me. The chair never said, Christine, are you sure this is really what you want to do? Should Bartolomeo be the one to resign and not Holgate here? Do you think it would be best for Australia Post uh, if the chair resigned or was sacked from his job, given the events of the last few months? I absolutely believe it fundamentally is. Later in the afternoon, when the chair gave his evidence, he said that Holgate had been treated badly, abysmally, he said, but she wasn't owed an apology. I think Christine Holgate's been treated abysmally, uh, but I believe the board and management did the right things by her. I know there was talk about so not no getting apology. the... apology. Sorry? No apology for Ms Holgate from... Australia Post. I don't believe Australia Post owes her an apology, no, but I do believe she's been badly treated. One of the real questions tonight is whether the chair should be removed and Holgate reinstated. And it's a question, here's why. Around the world, the postal business is on its knees. Most countries, like Australia, have their post office in government control. But in many countries, taxpayers have to tip in hundreds of millions of dollars just to keep the letters turning up in our mailboxes, mostly because they've sold off or never had the parcel business at some point in the past. Not so in Australia. Australia Post still has in its control the parcel business. In Australia, it's known as Star Trek. And what it makes as profit offsets the losses of the old letters business. And it means, of course, we can keep the postal business in Australia afloat. Now, in the two decades or so I've had something to do with postal policy in Canberra, there's always been a few zealots who want to sell it off. They want to sell off, in particular, the parcels business. They know the parcels business is lucrative and to privatise it would help balance the federal budget. But I've always argued, and here I suspect Holgate is the same, Without the parcels business, she just couldn't operate the other letter side of the business and have it break even because regardless of where you want to send a letter in a country like Australia, the next suburb or another state, as you know, the cost is the same. Not a big issue in a country like Britain, but by God, it's a big issue in a country like Australia that a letter from Tassie to Darwin is the same across suburbs in Melbourne. And that can't ever change because it's about fundamental fairness and it's embedded in regulation. Now, at the time of Holgate's departure, the board had a report. And that report was looking at a whole lot of massive changes to the Australia Post business. Job cuts, changes to LPO structures, a whole box and dice. It was a report from Boston Consulting Group. 
Now, Holgate said today she didn't support the report's recommendations. Others on the board, she says, were up for changes. When this report was the subject of Senate hearings last year, Holgate claimed the chairman had lied to the parliament. Senator, I, I struggle with the chairman's evidence on this important report mm. because the report was commissioned to actually inform the chair, myself and the board. Mm. The chairman had numerous copies of the report. The chairman travelled to Canberra with me and he met with BCG and senior members of both departments. Mm. We discussed it at multiple board meetings. We had a five-hour board meeting on the BCG review. Mm -hmm. I find it almost impossible to believe a chairman could forget that. There's still a lot to play here, lots of evidence to come, but uh, in my view, this is a CEO that eclipsed her board, particularly when it comes to business experience and intellect. Given every one of us as a stake in Australia Post and its viability and its survival into the future, I'm sure you'll want to keep following it as I do, and we will, here on Credlin.